counter-evolution NGOs by Withered Rose. As we are going through the different obstacles to a successful counter-evolution, such as the media and the military, the eventual interference of non-government organizations, or NGOs, needs to be addressed. NGOs can be any number of things, the main types being the following. Bingo, a big international NGO, such as the Red Cross. These are also called business-friendly NGOs. Bingo, an international NGO such as Oxfam. ENGO, an environmental NGO like Greenpeace. Ringo, a religious international NGO such as Catholic Relief Services. CSO, a civil society organization like Amnesty International. GONGO, a government organized organization like International Union for Conservation of Nature. Point one. Not all NGOs are overtly political, but some, like Amnesty International, are. George Soros Open Society Foundations is perhaps the most infamous in conservative circles for its left-wing activism. We can imagine that open society foundations, and other left-aligned NGOs, would rapidly mobilize in the face of a counter-revolution and try, through various means, to quash it or, if it succeeds, to launch a retaliatory color revolution. These organizations are very powerful and are our model for victory, as we have said previously, which also makes them our chief rivals. What needs to be asked, then, is how do you prevent an NGO revolt? There is the greed way of doing things, such as kicking antagonistic NGOs out of the country sure, they are out, but they still exist and will almost certainly fund a child organization, one less openly hostile to the counter-revolution. Opposed to the way of greed is the Wagma method. What is Wagma? Wagma is a term coined by a friend of mine that is a mix between Chad and Alpha, but without the annoying accoutrements. Unlike the Greek, the Wagma finds out that American branch of the Open Society Foundations is a 501 C3 and, accordingly, knows how to shut down the branch for good. A 501c3 can lose its tax-exempt status if it makes partisan comments in official organization publications or at official functions of the organization, too given the political polarization of 2020's America, and looking at what Open Society Foundations espouses or especially at its track record in getting left-wing district attorneys elected, it should be an easy case to revoke their tax-exempt status. Not only will open society foundations, in America, become liable to taxation, money that can be used to solidify the counter-revolution, but it will lose many of its perks that kept operational costs down. Software and real estate are given at significantly discounted prices to 501 C3s, and the deal is so great it is often the reason for incorporation. Many businesses' expenses that used to be written off, such as travel, and lunch meetings will begin to add up, workers' wages will take a cut, and ad buys will become pricier. In short, the antagonist has begun to bleed, and the newly formed counter-evolutionary government is sapping up its resources. Every dollar to an enemy NGO is fattening up the pay cow. 
from here the newly formed American government can lean on European and Latin American governments to do the same, applying economic pressure if necessary. To be truly WAGMA, taxes on enemy NGOs that reside in foreign countries could be split in half, one half for the foreign country and the other half as a tribute to America. It is one thing to eliminate an enemy, it is another to defang him and turn him into a cash cow. Make your enemy work for you. Let people contribute to a leftist cause. Sure, you can donate to Soros. You want to give money to Amnesty International. Knock yourself out. We are going to be taking a portion of those donations, however. Maybe we'll raise the tax every once in a while, especially if the new government wants a nice vacation to the beach one weekend. It would be prudent to keep an eye on these NGOs as they are milked. With some of the tax money an anti-revolutionary task force could be created. Such a task force would monitor the activities of known revolutionary groups, but, most importantly, would actively infiltrate them and propagate dead-end ideas to paralyze revolutionary analysis. Tell the heads of these NGOs that power is absolute and that, by definition, any political agitation will strengthen the regime. Pro-regime agitation obviously helps it, but anti-regime agitation provides the regime with a scapegoat to blame its problems on. Or disseminate that necessity of overcoming meta-narratives and the insistence on being. Get these NGOs worried about fighting totality and formulating a philosophy of freedom and becoming. You might have recognized the first dead end, and bonus points for those who get the second reference. The later will not work anymore because the left learned to bug Deleuze and Foucault a while ago, this is how they broke through with Clinton, but more importantly, with Obama, and the former is being used now on the dissident right. New mind traps will need to be thought of, and this could be a really fun project. In this series one am not advocating for any specific type of government to replace the current U.S. system, but, rather, providing a model for how any new type of government might take hold, if you prefer Blitzkrieg. That being said, I imagine whatever type of government replaces the current one it will be less democratic in that voting is done away with or restricting. Or more democratic in that referenda will replace most elections. This is what a certain German democratically elected leader did. I see its appeal, but I do not advocate it. Perhaps the government will stay the same but declare that laws are only properly laws if they are restatements of divine law, or nature's law. Point three. Either of these three will limit the ability of NGOs to tamper in elections and advance their agenda. To prevent NGO interference, then, the counter-revolutionary government will subject hostile NGOs to taxation and milk them for all they have. Infiltrate them and erect intellectual roadblocks. Make sure the government is structurally resistant to election tampering. 1. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot human rights careers dot com slash issues slash type stash of dashing goes slash hash colon tilde colon text equals here percent twenty r percent twenty some percent twenty of percent twenty the percent twenty main percent twenty types percent three a percent two oh one comma organization 
Organization percent 20 like percent 20 international percent 20 union percent 20 for percent 20 conservation percent 20 of percent 20 nature 2 https colon slash slash non profit risk dot org slash resources slash articles slash how dash to dash lose dash your dash five oh one c three dash tax dash exempt dash status dash without dash really dash trying slash hash colon tilde colon text equals another percent twenty activity percent twenty that percent twenty can percent 20 potentially percent 20 jeopardize percent 20 and percent 20 organization percent e 2 percent 80 percent 99 s comma not percent 20 substantially percent 20 related percent 20 to percent 20 the percent 20 organization percent e 2 percent 80 percent 99 s percent 20 exempt percent 20 per Purpose. 3. https colon slash slash scattered roses dot substack dot com slash p slash sovereignty s equals w